Thank you for joining us at Region 7 Education Service Center. This is the second video in a series of videos for using Gmetrics. This one will cover creating an access code, searching for an access code, creating groups, and making changes to group. I will be using the Chrome web browser, and so if you're using a different web browser, your screen may look a little different. We're going to start by going to www.gmetrics.net forward slash manage. You'll see a login screen where you'll enter your login information. Click the sign in button. Your screen will look a little differently than mine does because I'm the administrator for several sites. However, you should only see your district information when you log in. We're going to start by creating an access code. So we're going to scroll to the left hand side menu and click access codes. Again on this screen you should only see your district information. We're just going to use Frankston as an example. Here's one that I've created earlier and if you've created access codes previously you'll see yours listed here as well. We're going to go ahead and click the big green create codes button at the top. This is where you'll see your seat license information listed, the expiration date for those licenses as well, and how many seats you have available. If you have Microsoft Office Specialist or Adobe Certified Associate, um, either one of those would be listed here. If you have both, then both would be listed here. I'm just going to click the pencil button on the far right hand side to create a code. This area of the access code is called the unique identifier. It has um, an option to have a minimum of three characters and a maximum of eight characters. You can make that whatever works best for your school district. Some people like to make one for Word, Excel, PowerPoint, etc. Um, some like to make one um, based on the different teacher names. So it's kind of up to you, or if you want to create all of your access codes at one time, you have the option to do that as well. I'm just going to use a variation of what I entered earlier. But here where it says the number of codes, um, if you only want to create one code, you'll need to change this. If you want to create all of your codes at one time, you can leave the total number there, uh, the ones that are, that are available, and it will add a number to the end of the identifier that you have here in sequential order. So TH2016A1, 2, 3, 4, 5, those will be the access codes that are created. You'll notice there is a note up here at the top. Um, this looks a little differently than the Gmetrics implementation guide screenshots. So some of these settings are pre-filled for you and if you would like to edit those at another time you can later so we'll hit the next button see how that created the five codes TH 2016A1, 2, 3, 4, 5 You have the option, if you had additional access codes to create here, you'd have the option to do that by clicking this button. If you would like to export these, it will export into an Excel file where you can easily copy those and print them to have at each um, designated computer for practice exams. Or you can email those to your students or post them somewhere within your classroom. There is important to note that um, CCI Learning Certiport and Gmetrics recommend that you do not publish your access codes to a public forum, such as a public accessible website, because it may result in your access codes being deactivated because students who are not part of your organization may use those. Now we want to cover how to search your access codes and edit your access codes. And so we're going to go back to that menu on the left hand side and click the access codes button. We're going to go ahead and click in here with your pencil button. And you can see I have um, my unique identifier here. 
that was assigned to five different codes and then um, my second identifier that I created earlier if you know your identifier and you're looking for a particular subject area like we talked about earlier Microsoft Excel etc you can enter that in this identifier field and hit search to make it more easily um, found for you in the list If you need to see more detail, you'll want to click over here on the right hand side, there's a little bulleted list. You'll click that icon. It's going to bring up the detail for this particular access code. The products that are listed here are what your students will have access to take exams in when they use this um, access code. So we'll want to just scroll down here and click edit transaction. This is set to number of students is 1 and the number of uses the maximum of 100 and to expire in 365 days. Please note that these do expire when your seat license expires. So even if you put in 365 days, if your seat license expires prior to that, so do your access codes. And down here you have different options for your tests um, that students will be able to see when they log into Dmetrics SMS. Most people are not using Microsoft Office 2007. They're using 2010 or 2013. You can use these buttons on the left hand side to expand those. If you only want to uh, if you're only using 2010 for example, you can use this plus button going to bring the different programs that are available and if you are only going to use Excel in your access code for example if you've titled that one Excel then you could uncheck everything except for Excel and hit the plus button and it lets you know what's already in the system all of these different tests um, testing mode and in training mode that your students would be able to see if these are checked when they use that access code when logging into Gmetrics SMS. I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom. We saw earlier when we created our access code that there was a note that was already pre-selected for you to allow students to review missed questions without changing their score when they're in testing mode. If you don't want to allow that, you have the option to uncheck that here. Um, most would like to allow them to be able to review their missed questions to go ahead and hit next. And it asks you to review the information to make sure that you only selected the ones that you want your students to see. As you can see, I did not uncheck 2013 and my students are taking 2010 so I want to hit the back button. And we'll just expand that so we can see what exams are selected and uncheck those. If you use the check boxes over to the left hand side, you can select and unselect all very quickly for that particular program. So I'm just going to close that and hit the next button. And now I see all the Excel 2010 tests is what I have selected for this access code. And you can edit those at any time to change the exams that your students see. So if you're covering a different program um, at different times throughout the year and you want to use the same access code, you can go in and change the, the tests that are available very easily by editing that access code. We're going to take a few minutes just to briefly cover groups. You'll want to click this button on the left hand side menu that says groups. You can choose code group or student group. A code group is for groups of access codes and so if you have um, several teachers using this program and you each have your own access codes, you may want to use a code group that identifies just your codes that you've created. Um, if you're using a student group, you can select individual students to make part of a group that can be tied to one particular access code. And so if you don't want all the students that are in your account to see, um, for example, another teacher's access code, um, or you can select only the students that you want to be able to use that. So we're going to start by clicking code group.
and you would click the big green button at the top that says create code group. You're going to click create new group at the bottom. And I'm just going to use my name because that's what I used for my identifier. And I'm going to say that I want only this one to be tied to my group because the other five um, are not my excess codes per se. So we'll hit the next button and hit next again to confirm. And your group was created successfully. Now if you're going to create a student group and you only want to tie certain students to it, you're going to click the group button and click student group. Click create student group. And we're just going to say Miss Hicks Students. And if there were students that had already created um, their accounts, then they would be listed here where you could click check boxes and add those students to your group. And hit the next button and it would complete that creation of a group. And so now we want to go back and see how can I edit my group. And these instructions follow both for code groups and student groups. So we're going to go back to our groups menu and click that. And you see my group listed here that I created earlier. And if I want to edit that at any time I can by clicking that little pencil button on paper and click edit. It shows here that this is checked and I'm already in this group, but if I wanted to switch that out and say I don't want this to be part of that group anymore, it's going to give me a message to ask, are you sure you want to remove this from the group? Yes, okay. I want to add these other five um, identifiers to my group and hit next. And it's just going to give you the option to confirm, shows you which code groups and if you had individual ones that you didn't create in sequential order, you could check each of those individually. And hit Next. And again, you get the message that the group was edited successfully. My name is Tanya Hicks. I'm a secretary at Region 7 Education Service Center. I work for Adrian Knott. He's the CTE coordinator here at Region 7. You can contact me at 903-988-6848 or thicks at esc7.net. You can contact Adrian by visiting www.esc7.net, scrolling down to Federal Programs and Career and Technical Education. His contact information is listed at the bottom of the page. His phone number and his email address. If you click here and you have your email account set up, you can click an email or towards the bottom left-hand side, you can see his email address is a knight at esc7.net. Thank you.